Hi, my name is Bob, and this is Suzanne. Hi. We're going to review another board game today. What is the game du jour, Bob? We're going to play the board game The Man in the Moon. This game came out in the late 1890s, or actually it was the early 1890s. It was published by McLaughlin Brothers. It came in two different flavors. One copy of the game had this cover on it. The second copy had the man in the moon on the cover. I think the man in the moon is a more attractive color. Both games are identical when it comes to the content inside. The board is basically a five by five grid and each player has five wooden pawns uh, to play with. We're gonna go ahead now and explain how to play the game. Okay, here we are at the start of the game. Um, White has gone first, and they've taken one of their 12 pieces and placed it on any square on the board with the exception of the center square. The center square has to remain uh, empty. Neither player can play on it. So we're at the point where um, there's only three pieces left to be played. Uh, green will play here, and then we'll have White play in here. And finally, Green will put that last square down. Okay, now it's White's turn to go first. And White has to move on to the center square. Um, they can only move a piece one space at a time, left or right, up or down. They cannot move a piece diagonally. So, um, let's go in the assumption that um, white goes here. So if white goes there, they've trapped this piece here between these two pieces. And they get to capture that piece. It's now green's turn. And green can go here. Now if green goes there, they've captured two pieces. Because these two pieces here are between the two green pieces. And then it would be White's turn to move. And let's see, White can move, but it looks like uh, on this particular turn, they're not going to be able to capture a piece. So um, White might do something like this. And then it would be Green's turn to move. And Green would move to some place like this. And then if it's White's turn to move, um, let's go in the assumption that they're going to go here. Then on Green's turn, they can move back where they were and capture this piece here. So now Green is up 3 to 1. And that's basically the way you play the game. You keep going like this until one man is down to a single piece. That man is the loser and he is the man in the moon. So, a strategy that I tend to follow on this is I try to get my uh, opponent along the edge of the board in a specific area where they can't move forward. If you have your opponent trapped in a corner of the board, where they, if they move a man forward toward the center of the board, it gets captured. That's typically the way you can win the game. Um, when you play the game online, uh, they have one extra rule there. If you've gone 20 moves without a capture on the board, then the game is over, and whoever has made the most captures is the winner. Um, that typically is what, what happens, is that uh, you get to the point where one person will have the advantage, and they'll, they won't necessarily try to capture the opponent, but what they'll do is they'll uh, make it so that the opponent cannot move forward without losing their men. And it can end in a tie if the same number of pieces have been captured. But most of the time you'll have one person uh, claiming victory. So, this, that's the game. Uh, Suzanne and I have played it a few times. And I think she enjoys it. I do. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, we played it a couple of times online and it was fun and we played it on the board. I really enjoy the game. 
It has strategy. Uh, it's uh, actually lovely to look at, considering how old this game is. It, it really is. It, uh, and, uh, you know, I just learned how to beat him. Thanks, Bob. Okay, now we'll go ahead and talk about how you can get the game. Well, this is an old Victorian board game that plays well. There aren't too many of them. Uh, there are games like Reversi, uh, Chivalry, Helma that play well. But most of the old uh, uh, Victorian board games from the late 1800s were simple uh, race games. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about the game and how you can get it. Um, as you can imagine, this game is not an easy game to find. It came out in the early 1890s, so it's not something you're going to find in your local thrift shop. Um, there is another option. We'll grab that. This book came out in 1979 uh, by Brian Love. It covers board games from 1895 to 1955. And if you go to the beginning of the book, you'll find the Man in the Moon game there that you can play right inside of the book. And in the back of the book, you'll find the various pieces that you need to play the games in the book. This book you can find fairly easily online. The probably the best option though when it comes to playing the game is to go online and play the game online. We have a link at the bottom of this page or the, this video which will take you to the site where you can log in with your Google ID and two players can go online and play the game interactively. Uh, it's simply a matter of uh, moving your pieces. The game automatically captures the pieces and keeps track of the moves. And like I said earlier, if you go 20 moves without a capture, the game automatically ends and whoever's captured the most pieces is declared the winner. As you were. So, uh -huh. so um, it's very hard to put a value on these old board games. Um, this Man in the Moon game that had the uh, other cover with the Man in the Moon on the cover sold in the late 1980s for $5,000 at auction. However, in more recent times, in 2015, the game appeared on a uh, auction website. It went for about $390. Then it looks like that same game was put on eBay a few months later, and it sold for over $3,000. So you can see the, the value of these games, of these Victorian games can fluctuate a lot, depending upon uh, how it's sold and uh, who is bidding on it in an auction. It only takes a couple people to uh, significantly raise the price. Okay, well thanks for being with us again Thank you. and we'll see you next time. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell to receive automatic notification of upcoming uh, uh, videos. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the AGPI website, located at gamesandpuzzles.org. On this site, you'll find over 30 years of publications devoted to games and puzzles in flipbook format. In addition, be sure to subscribe to the AGPI YouTube channel and click on the bell to receive automatic notifications when videos are added to the channel. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye.